Hi, this is David. In this video, we're going to talk about Azure Active Directory conditional access policies. These are set in Azure Active Directory. So if I navigate to the Azure portal and search for Azure Active Directory, bring it up here. There it is. Uh, and what I want to do is go down to the security tab here. Before I do that, I want to just let you know that Conditional access policies are inconsistent with security defaults. So if you have security defaults implemented now, you'll have to deactivate those in order to use conditional access policy. So I'll go down to the security tab now. And there's a blade right here for conditional access right there. That's what I want to do. I want to create a new policy. When I do this, this blade comes up here. And the first thing it asks me is give it a name. I'm going to call this one GCAST. CA policy right there. And then it asks for uh, who, under what conditions is this assigned? Which users, which applications, and what other conditions? That's what these three sections are right here. So for example, if I click on users here, I can include all users or just specific users or specific groups. And if I check on one of these things, for example, guest or external users, it'll give me a list of external users and guests. Directory roles, you can select from a list of those. Users and groups, you can select over here, specific users and groups, search for them in this way. Um, if I'm in here, then I can select this to apply just to me. You want to be careful you don't apply something that's going to lock you out, though. Um, that might be very bad. And, and almost all these things, they would include an exclude button. So you can explicitly say that this policy will will apply to the whoever you select here, or it'll apply to everyone except for who you select here. So except for David Giard, for example, or some specific group, things like that. And I'm going to click on none and deselect that as well. So this won't be part of the criteria, uh, but we also have, uh, in addition to users, we have applications because it applies to when you're trying to access a specific application. And you can specify these are all cloud apps or specific apps, in which case you'll come in here and you have to click on uh, yes. And you actually have to have custom attributes configured to use this. And I don't have those right now, but there's a, a builder here where you can add expressions to say only applications that match certain criteria on here. And again, we have both the include and the exclude here to specify that. And finally, we have other conditions, uh, and these are different categories of them that you can use that will allow you to uh, specify things like, oh, um, is it a, a user risk? And a user risk is something like, uh, is the user that's trying to log in, are they part of a leaked credential list? or are they behaving in a strange way and they're high and low risk risk? You always have to click on yes in order to enable these things, but I'll say no for right now, just demonstration purposes. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Sign-in risk is not it's not about the user itself, but it's more about that that user is doing something unusual. Like for example, trying to sign in from two different locations far apart at the same time, then you may wanna do that. And you can specify high risk, medium, low, what kind of risk we're, we're trying to do and how that's going to apply for. Click OK here. Uh, de device platform specifies um, what's what's the operating system that they're using. Are they using Windows? Are they using a, a, an Android or an iOS, iOS phone? And you can be specific, turn that on and say, I, I want this to apply to anybody that's trying to log in from a Linux machine, for example. Or I can say, Anyone who's, uh, this applies to anyone that is not logging on from a Windows machine. Everything else is where I want to apply this thing. So, what else? Locations. You could specify any location or just trusted locations. You can configure trusted locations or selected locations. And here you can set up, there's elsewhere in here, you can specify lists of locations to specify. One thing would be for, forbidden locations. So, in your forbidden locations, you may have 
um, certain countries that you just don't trust anyone that's logging in from North Korea or from Russia or Afghanistan. Or you could just select what those countries are um, or from specific IP ranges that you know that have been hostile in the past. You may specifically target those for your policy. Uh, what else? Let's see down here again. We have both uh, included next to for all these things. Uh, client applications. If the client is trying to access an application through a browser, maybe that's significant. I have to turn it on first. Uh, or through a mobile app, maybe there are certain policies that you want to say. If you're on a mobile app, you want to implement multi-factor authentication, for example, or things like that. Um, say no here. Okay. And finally, the device type that you're using. And here again, we have a builder add expression here. And you can say things like, oh, if the device ID equals a certain value, then you can apply it specifically to that. Um, and you could add, you could end these together or or them together, whichever. There's a whole logical thing you've got here. But you've got all sorts of things that you can specify. You know, if the device is already compliant of certain manufacturers, there's all sorts of attributes you can do, including custom attributes that you can add to this. So these are the filters here, users, applications, and then this set of conditions right here that you can do. And that tells it when the, the, the access policy kicks in. And what that access policy does is specified here under grant. So if I say, it looks like I clicked, I didn't mean to select a condition here, but it looks like I did not configured. figured. Um, okay, um, but uh, here's where I tell it what it's going to do. And I can say that, okay, if you meet this condition, let's say I want to block everybody from North Korea, for example, you can do that. So I can specify any hostile country um, Then I want to, anybody in a forbidden country, I'm just going to block access, forget it. Or I can do this. I'll grant access, but I'll give them a, a speed bump of some kind. Like, for example, I'll require multi-factor authentication. And there's some more, some ways that you can implement that here. Or I can say require them to change their password under certain conditions. Or um, uh, require them to view the terms of service. Things like that. What it, these are all just speed bumps. Yes, you can access the application. But you have to do something first. So you have that op 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 option right here. Um, so I'll just say, oh, these guys, let me say it's going to have blocked access right here. Um, no, I'll say they must, I'll, I won't be that mean. I'll say they just have to watch the, read the terms of service right here. Um, and then uh, under session, this says how often they have to do that. So for example, if I log into an application and I read the terms of service and then I log in again, an hour later, do I need to read them again? You know, or if I have multi-factor authentication, that's probably a, a more significant one. That's kind of an inconvenience to go to do that. Do you really want them to do that every time they request a page in your web application? And you can control that here under session. You could say that um, go by sign-in frequency, for example. I want to say that okay, that once they once they do the thing, whatever it is, multi-factor authentication, uh, change their password, whatever, they're good for another four hours right here. You can do it by time. You can let the uh, let the browser, as long as they're on the same browser session, you can tell it that's okay. And you've got things like that where you can specify how often they do that. So what do you want to do is in here, give it a name, specify who, what, and how this policy is assigned, what does the policy actually do? Does it block the user? Or does it grant them access only after they perform some action? And then how often they get to do that? And once you're done, these buttons down here say you, you clicked on to implement that policy. Once I click on and say create, then I'm good to go. Anybody that meets that criteria is going to have to perform those actions every so often, whatever session is going to do. Turn it off. You may want to do that because maybe you want to set everything up and configure it, but it's not going to go into effect until the first of the quarter or, or whatever. Um, but you're ready to go. Just change, click a button when you're ready to go. And you can also set it to report only. Sometimes that's useful. You want to say, well, you know, this policy, I'm going to implement it, but uh, not yet. I just want to know if I even need to implement this. Are there people that are connecting from Russia that are using iOS devices? For these applications through their browser, uh, you know these are uh, 
Uh, maybe I don't need that. Sometimes it's, it's useful just to have that reporting information available to us to let us know. So once you're done, click on create and you're ready to go. Anybody that uh, tries to access these applications then will be subject to whatever those controls are. This is conditional access policies in Azure Active Directory. This is David. Thank you for watching. Yeah.